Looking at the battery side by side, you see that they are nothing like this. the difference here. The tray here on this one is. You can look at this terminal here. You can see how corroded it is. It should be two paints here, but it's one paint. Hi guys. So I was called all the way from Nigeria to um, the Republic to come and fix this um, theater camera. And um, the thing is, this guy had had this battery fixed before. He had replaced some cells and it actually lasted him for like um, six months to one year. So um, I had diagnosed this car previously and told him that the best solution for this vehicle is actually um, replacing the complete pack because this is a 2007 Toyota Camry and that battery has been running since 2007 and this is 2025. So I told him that the best thing is to actually replace the complete battery pack. So um, we went ahead to try to replace the complete battery, yeah, to um, price the complete battery. Getting the price of the complete battery pack, we realized that the complete battery pack, a refurbished battery pack for this car, is actually around $1,500 to $3,000, which is quite a lot of money in 2005. And so I suggested that what we could do, instead of getting a refurbished 2007 battery that may not be as solid as um, the recent year model one, how about we just go ahead and get um, a 2023 battery that would fit for this car? So what I did, I went ahead and, and got a Toyota Venza 2023 Toyota Venza battery. Now he had parked this car down for a very long time and he did something very wise by suspending the vehicle upwards. So I came and scanned for codes for the car. Although um, the dimensions for the Toyota Venza and the Toyota Camry batteries, physically looking at them, they are not the same. But there is a way you can actually tweak it and use the modules from the Toyota Venza and some other components from the Toyota Venza to actually modify this Toyota camera and it worked perfectly and it to give you longer range, longer lifespan because this is a 2023 battery, you cannot compare it to a 2007 battery. So I would quickly run a scan on this vehicle, we'll see the couple of code that we have on it, then we'll um, proceed with the other um, battery conversion. So turning on the ignition on this battery, what we got here is, um, you can hear the ABS module running on the background for too long which is a sign of the ABS module running out. I can see here we have check VSC and check every system on this vehicle here and trying to start this car first start we get we get that ready light that vibrating sound and the car shuts down but the red light still stays on which is a sign that the the hybrid system is actually doing its job but the engine system is not doing its job so probably because i had already told him that the battery had short lifespan on it so he just suspected that it was a battery issue and called me in so that's why i do not usually conclude with what my customer tell me i usually go ahead and run a scan as you can see here we have um we have a code here and you feel to start on this car you can see we have any further scan on this car replace the battery pack and lost communication on the back control which I had previously diagnosed for him and told that he needs to change the airbag control module here, under here, because um, the AC water got to it somehow, somehow. So, this engine failed to start isn't something that I should be getting. Even after replacing and um, doing the whole conversion and replacing the battery pack, you might ha still have problems. So, you can see here we have ignition called D. Now, after replacing the battery pack, I wouldn't try to start the car until I actually have fixed this code. This ignition called D means one of the ignition coil is actually bad. And, um, um i have gone to take a look at the ignition coil so this is ignition coil a b c and d that's the abs one i was telling about that it's running for too long which means it's actually running bad so this ignition coil d i had done the interchange in between um this one and this one and then and i saw that the coil code actually did transfer so we might need a replacement coil and we'll be doing um, um a bit of a system tune up on the engine after we've done the work on the battery at the end of the video i'll show you guys so i'll be taking out this um complete battery pack and then putting it side by side with the Toyota Venza battery pack for us to see what they look like physically. I don't need to document um, how to drop it down. There are several videos on my, on my channel on how to actually bring down this battery. First things first, this negative terminal has to be taken off, then the service plug, then the other things follows. So quick tip here before I actually even have this um, battery drop down. You can see we have here engine filter start and I checked the freeze frame data of that particular code. And what I'm getting here is, uh, you can see on block 2 here, we have 11.2 volts, we have 12 here. We have 11 here, then we have 11 on block um, 16. You can see how staggered they are. Now the battery blocks voltage are not even all true. So since they are not even, this battery computer will be throwing codes because it's not getting a balanced voltage. So this is a confirmation that actually my previous diagnosis about the fact that the battery has generated is actually correct. So we'll be doing battery replacement 
engine tune up and replacement of the coil that is bad he would um later on go for replacement of the um airbag control on ecu because without replacing that you still have to check every system with that because that's a safety concern we've taken out the battery from the trunk of this vehicle here and looking at the battery side by side you see that they are nothing like the same now this is the one from the 2023 Toyota Venza while well, this is the one from that car 2007 Toyota Camry and you can see them physically looking at them their outlook is not like the same at all you can see them there their dimensions and um, their design is not the same but um the thing is the modules inside are almost the same but there's a way we would do it and they would match each other so now I'll take everything apart for you guys to see the internal workings and the difference between each of them this is the one that we actually took out from 2007 Toyota Camry and this is the one that we got from a um, Toyota Venza as you can see here this is the Venza battery pack this is the um, Camry battery pack and you can see the distinct difference here the tray here on this one is actually short while the tray on this one has an extension where you keep the battery see you contact us on the rest and you can see this one has the vent hose attached to it while this one doesn't have the vent hose and you can see the tummy store on this one is actually placed at the top several tummy stores at the top while this one's here the tummy store is just one at the top here and you can see the design on this one here you can see how this one has has ridges here to it but this one here is smooth and flat surface and here's what i was telling you guys about the fact that they had actually worked on this battery before you can see the marking here we had replaced cell on this one before you can see the markings here and now we'll take a um, measurement of both battery cells for you to see what the voltage is it's like well dimension wise this module is as wide as that one and as thick as that one over there so we'll be doing a direct um um conversion from here to there and if you come to think of it um the <coughs> the polarities on this um, battery is actually equally the same but then um the designs are quite different so we'll be doing a um battery transfer from here to there you can see this one looks very new solid and this one looks um somehow old and used dirty so we'll take a measurement of each of the cell vote uh, cell voltages and then you get to see what it looks like so we're taking out the plastic covering each of these um buzz bars and here's what we noticed right off the bath you can look at this terminal here, you can see how corroded it is. Bad. The nuts are bad. Or the boss ones are bad. Corroded is going to cause high resistance. And this is not just as a result of um, battery usage. These batteries are actually sweating out um, fluid into this place. Although both batteries are nickel metal hydride, none of it's lithium ion. But you can see this boss bar here, you can see how shiny and neat this one is. So there will be good flow of electrons through the terminals during repair. So. That's one difference. So we're going to be taking measurements and see what we have. So, here's my ink multimeter that I just got. We have 7.55 here. The other terminal, 7.55 as well. 5.5. So if we start doing that measurement all the way down here, we'll see that all voltages on this are all balanced and equal down to the last one here. So balanced 7.55. So but let's come to the seven one here that we have taken out. You can see we have 6.1 here. This battery is actually dead and gone here at 7.52. And you can see how uneven it is 7.4 here the batteries are not balanced at all 6.2 so down right to the end there you see everything from twitching in between and none of it is actually holding solid down 7.39 and um, this one here as well 7.29 so you can see it's not even balanced at all and it's even actually running out you can see this one here so aside from the voltage that it holds during load during um the load process when it's being loaded with load the whole thing will be swelling and from twitching and to make this battery not work perfectly well so what we're going to be doing now is we're transferring the modules on this one here to this place having the bus bars to also transfer them then merging everything together making everything work as one before we install it in that car mind you would also replace um the would also um ignition coil on that car as well yeah okay, guys so um i've after a couple of works i've been able to transfer the batteries from this tree here from that tree here down to this one here you can see this is now the 2007 tree and all the modules are sitting tight and pretty in on it so i'll be you can see they're quite different so i'll be assembling everything back together in the reverse order putting on the car then the coil has been gotten 
so the coil has been gotten for the car so i'll be when i'm done with this um assembly i will um, go ahead and do it sitting for the car replace the coil don't go for a test drive um this is all the battery being installed on the tray here you can see that it's looking all clean and fine so i'm going to be putting all the components back in then install it on the vehicle so we've set up the bus ready to actually go back into the vehicle now okay, so the battery is in now I'm about to actually get the car started up but before we do that we would need to do a little bit of system tune on this car and uh, what i discovered here is interesting we've gotten the coil like i said here but then the coil on number four here is actually you can see it has this um compression leakage here and then this is the coil that we want to replace here then but if you see these other ones here they are still bright and clean on the edge yeah so i'll just be cleaning their tips here tapping them and putting them back in then i'll also be cleaning the nozzles here because they are all carboned up on the tip here see they are not clean at all so i'll be cleaning the nozzles as well and um the mass flow meter the air filter too i'll be blowing it up with this blower right here yeah. So I've actually tried to clean up the injector um that's total body and um I'll be changing all four plugs. These are new plugs that I've just got and the nozzles are already out and clean. You can see the tip is not as dark as it was initially again. So all things are clean, so I'll assembling everything back together, replacing this one coil here. This little one of these is used. Hope it's better than the first. Then we'll be starting the car up afterwards. I've rounded up the I've rounded up the engine tuning and all we're doing here. And I've installed the battery as well. So we are going to be going for a first time start now. Now this is the moment of truth. This is the first time I'm turning on the ignition of the vehicle. But I usually like scanning the car first before I actually try starting it for good. Now as you can see over there, it still shows check hybrid system. And I can guarantee you that it is due to the unresolved issue of the um, airbag module that has not been replaced. So we're going to run the scan on the vehicle now and see if we have any fresh codes on it. And now we are in and I'm going to run the scan on the engine system first. And you can see there that we have no codes on the engine system. So we're going to run the scan also on the um, hybrid system and see what codes we have. And um, we've also replaced that core that was bad. So, ABS keep buzzing, buzzing. And we have here, you can see there, it says lost communication with airbag control module. There is no serious um, malfunction fault on the car and all. So, I'm going to be doing a live data of the battery for us to see what the battery looks like. So, right about now, we can see on this um, battery blocks that all of them are at 15.1, 15.1. All of them are balanced out except for block one and now i am suspecting that either we have the old ecu being faulty or the line on that ecu side is being faulty so there's only one way to find out i'm going to start the car now and i'm going to look at what it actually performs as now i started the car and it has picked up to balance with all um, the other models which is surprising that vibration is normal because of the nozzles that we took out and the engine started and it's running now and everything seems fine but with the first instance that i got the block one being low i'll be suspecting the ecu being bad but then i would have to be patient on that and actually run the car for a while and see if the car actually performs fine so we have um delta state of charge at zero percent and then um, battery state of charge at 42. so i'll have the car run for a while let me run it again for trouble codes if there is any fresh trouble codes on this vehicle so we still have no trouble codes there and we have um no trouble goes on the engine so we'll have the car run not to warm up i think this is normal because we actually just um service those nozzles to cut out the plug so it's going to misfire a bit before it catches up you can see it's not the current code it's a pending code it's a monitored code so i'm going to run this car for a while then we'll see um what we have afterwards but well, the car is running now it's running pretty well now now the car has um, actually switched to hybrid and you can see there is still no code except for this ecu code which will be resolved on the letter note so i'm gonna have this car drop down and have the car run for a while run it around and would we'll see if the car still performs well with no problems thank you yeah so because of that battery incident we had i had to go ahead and um, replace this battery ecu because if you can look i don't know if it can be clear on the camera but if you look down there on this terminal around here it's a bit burnt up and um, 
the connector here to have the same markings on it you can see it here there should be two pins here but it's one pin joined together so i have to replace this one i think this is what was making the block one to misbehave so i'm going to be starting the car now and seeing if we have good reports although there was no code but that voltage fluctuation there was not giving me confidence in it so i had to replace it so i'm going to be starting it now and see if i have um, a different reading this time around so now that we've replaced the whole um block the whole battery and voltage and somewhere you can see that block one is no longer running low anymore it's now running approximately the same voltage as the rest of it here so i'm going to be starting the car now and seeing what we have um, let me just start the car now the car is started now and you can see the voltage is no longer jumping around like it was doing initially and the car is not stuttering like before you can see it it's no longer running around it's now balanced and this is what it should do so we have confidence now that this car is working fine now this is the battery cell charge we'll go for a long test run now and see how the car behaves it's pretty late but i'm going for a test drive now and the car is performing perfectly i had to change the um battery ecu and the buzz bar wires and some other things came up that i had to attend to to make this car work perfectly but as you can see the car drives perfectly now and um, so this is actually the live um, recording of the battery voltage and um, you can see that everything is working perfectly and all the battery voltage is actually not off balance as you can see they are all going up and down the way they should we are going and you can see voltage difference is not much just 0. <laughs> around 0. 0.0 like 0. 0.087 so it's really really working excellently here right this one is going to last long for the person